Thank you very much for your kind introduction and for inviting me to this event. I've also followed some of the sessions and I found them very, very interesting. And also thanks very much to Renata for this explanation she made, she just made, which is, I think it tells very, very well something that we all knew that was happening at the time, but maybe it was difficult to explain. I will give you my view on it. After all those social experiments that were done during the 60s, 70s, 80s, at the end of the 1980s, we realized at IFFD, we we're present now in 70 countries, at the time we were probably in not more than 40, 42, but we realized that societies started focusing attention on issues related to the family. It was uh, somehow understood, at least by some people in some countries, that uh, investing in families should be a productive way to ensure the future for societies. That's why at IFFD, we started thinking that we should not only give courses to parents, but also try to advocate for family policies, for government decisions, lawmakers' decisions that will make things uh, easier for families. And that is why I wasn't there yet, but I know that when the International Year of the Family and the International Day of Families were pro proclaimed by the General Assembly of the United Nations, at IFFD, they immediately reacted saying, okay, this is something we need to get involved. In both ways, we could say, we need to make our families participants of these celebrations and we also need to go to the UN and tell what we think that should be done to help families. In fact, the, uh, uh, when the International Day of Families was established, and I, I have a quote here, it says, it was done, among other things, to increase the knowledge of the social, economic, and demographic processes affecting families. In my opinion, this was like a formal recognition of the social role of families, which is really what explains our interest for these two observances. So back in 2011, I was already at IFFD, Renata was there also, we tried to get involved in the preparations for the 20th anniversary. And we promoted a civil society declaration signed by representatives of nearly 300 organizations. That was like the starting point of what we have been doing, which is actively promote the objectives of the anniversary, mobilizing support for it, and organizing a number of race awareness events throughout the year in many countries. Then, when the Sustainable Development Agenda was adopted in 2015, we also saw it as a way to put family even more as it place, because the agenda sets some very clear goals, 17 Sustainable Development Goals, but it doesn't tell us how we can reach them. In our view, families and family-oriented policies and programs are vital for the achievement of the most important of these goals. At the time, this was, if you want, just an opinion. 
But then we promoted and developed this project together with UNICEF and other world experts on SDGs and families. And just to make it very, very short, the conclusions show that the family, and I quote them, the family unit has proven to be the main agent for development within societies. So you can see that as time went on, we were more and more convinced that we were in the right path for this kind of channel between our families and political power in many countries and also with the UN or the European Union to show this social relevance of families for development and for the future of societies. Renata was mentioning the three objectives of the 20th anniversary, confronting family poverty, ensuring world family balance, advancing social integration and intergenerational solidarity. And these were really very, very much three of our objectives with, with, with our courses. Now it is true that new challenges for families have risen worldwide, as some mega trends continue to grow, but at the time those three topics were exactly what we needed to help families to solve with our courses and also with our advocacy work. Now you know that in preparation for the 30th anniversary, the United Nations aims to focus uh, those new mega trends, so to say, starting by highlighting this year the impact of new technologies on families. Just to give you an idea of how much attached we are to these topics, to contribute to this day, we organized back in January an online focus group of experts and have recently published its main content and recommendations. Because we think it's a very timely, a very, very important topic for families nowadays. And meanwhile, the pandemic has confirmed that all this we were working at was a kind of preparation for this situation we never thought it would happen, of course. Because we have seen with the pandemic that our society, how can I say it, is not as idyllic as many thought in terms of equality, freedom and ecology for families. We feel that our labor market, for instance, is outdated because it makes it very difficult for women to be mothers sometimes. Our educational system is also outdated because it doesn't fit with the job offer. And then our social, economic and political system is also outdated because when we manage to overcome traditional poverty, it brings poverty of a new kind, namely poverty of time, poverty of, of affection, of the affection we all need so much. This is why we propose, basically thinking in the future, to promote uh, a whole new set of rules for family policies based on four main principles. First, flexibility in work conditions. We have seen how telework can be the rule in many cases, making work-family balance more accessible, helping the worker feel more integrated, and saving space, time, and cost to the employer. Second, responsibility in sharing work at home. With more flexible work arrangements, women wouldn't have to face alone 
the triple burden of working as a man, having children and being responsible for most of the housework, as fathers would also be able to spend more time at home. Third, solidarity among generations. The pandemic outbreak, especially, was particularly detrimental to other persons or to persons with disabilities and other illnesses, as well as youth and indigenous peoples in different senses. As the pandemic will put many of them at greater risk of poverty, discrimination and isolation. And finally, number four, sustainability. Let's not forget that this term, as originally coined by the Brundtland Commission, means development that meets the need of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. We need to take care of our planet. Precisely because we want to take care of its inhabitants, our fellow men and women. So these four principles will, will in our opinion, um, help family policies to be much more centered and focused on families. If I can add it, our impression from families all over the world is that um, families were the only ones really ready to face such a thing as a pandemic. We have seen how uh, lawmakers, politicians, uh, social structures were a bit lost uh, month after month and in fact it was it was families who who had to take most of the burden of the burden of it so so that's why that's why we feel that helping families for the future will be very very good to help societies as a whole and then with this year's celebration well we're, we're trying to support as much as we can i told you um, this uh, focus group we have organized we're very happy also that our new president, Olivier Yao from Ivory Coast, will be moderating uh, the, the panel during the event. And we have, we have also organized our own event, which will, which will be held after it, um, that tries just to celebrate the joy of the family. We're going to do something we have never done because it was not easy. As we have the possibility of organizing this event online, we are going to show some dozens of people who work for IFFD in more than 30 countries, which would have been impossible to, 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 to bring them to New York so that we can show the kind of spirit, the kind of attitude, the kind of, of work that we do with families. You're, of course, cordially invited to, to this event too. But more than anything, as a conclusion, I think that if we focus families in the social role as agents for development, we are doing the right thing, not only for us, but for the whole of society.